So our next speaker is a dedicated advocate of technology and committed to showcasing the strengths of women and minorities and also helping people who want to get into games. So if you're interested in love technology as well as games, then you're in the right place. Um, Sarah Sexton is a co-founder of Voxels, a group for women, women developers in Chicago, and she also doubles as a Microsoft technical evangelist. Um, today, Sarah will be talking to us about how to build your very first Node.js app on um, open source software, as well as publishing it online to GitHub, as well as um, exploring how to develop this app and push it on to the Microsoft Azure Cloud Platform. So, please welcome me. And, um, inviting Sarah Sexton to the stage. Thank you so much for joining me for my session today. Um, as David said, my name is Sarah Sexton. I'm a technical evangelist working for Microsoft. And what that means is that it's my job to engage with user groups and developers and communities and students, uh, and basically help you guys find success with building platforms on Windows and uh, finding success with Microsoft in any way I can. And so here's the agenda for today. Uh, in my presentation, uh, I want to teach you how to build your very first Node.js app and publish it online directly from Azure through GitHub. And I want you guys to follow me on the personal learning journey from when I first heard about Node.js to learning what it was, uh, downloading the appropriate tools, building something with it, and then finally publishing it to Azure. So you'll leave with some basic knowledge about Node.js, how to get started building your first Node app, and how to share it with the rest of the world. We'll be building a very simple chat room app today. But first of all, let's tackle the question of what is Node.js for those of you who might not know. Uh, to put it simply, Node.js is a tool for making web applications using JavaScript. And JavaScript is extremely popular, and anyone who knows it client-side in the browser can learn to use it in Node quite easily. Uh, Node includes a built-in HTTP toolkit for easily creating web servers, so you can spin up like a single-page website in less than a dozen lines of code. People love using Node.js because it's fast and easy to use. It also scales exceptionally well. A single node process can handle tens of thousands of simultaneous requests before experiencing any performance lag. Node.js was born when Google took its JavaScript engine called V8, written for use in Chrome, and removed all the browser stuff. They got rid of like the HTML, the DOM, the entire browser. It's just a .js file. Um, it converts the JavaScript code into low-level CPU instructions before running it, just like you would for C or C++ code. So Node is a runtime environment and a library for running JavaScript applications outside the browser. And the JavaScript code executes directly from a .js file. Node essentially lets you use JavaScript just like you would use Ruby, Python, or Perl. And it provides a set of built-in libraries for performing very common I.O. tasks. Node's package manager system, called NPM, lets developers publish to and uh, install from a single source of open source code. And this is a really big final piece of the Node.js puzzle because it makes it extremely easy to find and uh, use publicly available libraries to accomplish common tasks. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. If you want to do something and you can think of it, someone else has probably already started it, so you can just find that. So it continues with the, the pattern of being very fast and easy to use. So let's talk about NPM in a little bit more detail. Like I said, it's the Node Package Manager. Um, if you guys are familiar with ASP.NET, that's kind of like what NuGet is, and it's what the gem is if you're familiar with Ruby. It's just a central repository for all the extensions and third-party libraries. And it already comes bubble installed with the environment automatically. So you just search for a library that does what you want, and you don't have to basically do anything from scratch. Real-time applications are becoming a big deal. Um, web sockets have reached a degree of support where sites can start to take advantage of them. And Node does web sockets and long pole HTTP connections really well. 
So to get started with building your first app, you'll obviously need the Node.js command prompt on your computer. Uh, uh, then you use the npm commands to install each module your app will need. Uh, you'll also need a text editor if you don't have one already for any code. Um, the one I'll be using today is Visual Studio Code, which is the lightweight version of Visual Studio. It's more like Notepad++ plus plus or Sublime. And of course, you'll want your preferred method of source control, whether that be GitHub or Bitbucket or Git or what have you, maybe Visual Studio Online or Dropbox. If you're not comfortable with typing commands into a tiny black box, uh, there's a program called Node.js Tools for Visual Studio, or NTBS. That's a free open source plugin that turns uh, Visual Studio, the, the big one, into a Node.js IDE, uh, Integrated Development Environment. So let me tell you what dependencies I'll be showing you today. Um, Express is a web framework that lets you structure your web app to handle multiple different HTTP requests at a specific URL. That means like if you go to a website and it ends with a slash, you maybe go slash about or slash contact or slash index. Those are just different um, HTTP requests, but they're basically go to the same URL column. And Socket.io is a simple JavaScript library and Node.js module that allows you to create, this is my favorite sentence, count the buzzwords, create real-time, bi-directional, event-based communication apps, simply and quickly. Chat. It simplifies the process of using WebSocket significantly, and I use Socket.io to make my chat room app. So, in short, implement Socket.io to connect, send, and receive messages. You can do that without refreshing the page. They just show up in real time. Now, for the rest of my presentation, I will demonstrate how to run an app locally from the console. Then later on, I will illustrate the wonders of continuous integration uh, deploying your web app from Visual Studio Online or GitHub to, uh, to some kind of external repository results in continuous deployment where the uh, Azure can pull in the most recent updates from your project. And we'll get into that in more detail later. Okay. So I'm going to uh, start the live coding process now, and hopefully the demo gods have accepted my sacrifice and kind of let me get through this. <laughs> Okay, so you want to open up the, the Node.js command prompt. Mine is a white background because it shows up easier on presentations. Yours will probably be a black background. Good question. There's a question. It's not showing up on the screen. Thank you. The guys are not happy. It happens. That one, that's easy to fix because it's just when I exit PowerPoint that happens automatically. Now I know how to fix this one. I just duplicate. Thank you, thank you for calling that out. Okay, so like I was saying, my prompt is a white background, and for you it will be a black background. I changed it to white because it shows up easier in presentations. Okay, so when you first open up the Node.js command prompt, it starts you in a default folder, but you can edit that later. So I have mine set to go to my C drive and go to a folder I created called Git. That's where I store all my GitHub projects. Um, so if you get confused and you're trying to follow along, you can't find your Git folders because you need to make one. Okay. All right. So this is the part where you need to know command line commands. So you need to know like cd dot dot, which stands for change directory, and dir, which is short for a directory, to navigate your way through the folders until you get where you want to be. Okay, so here we want to create a new folder and then later initialize it as a Git repository after we've made some of the code files. So, NKDIR, I want to say is short for make directory. And uh, what should I call this? How do I call it, like, flourish? I usually call these people, like something chat, but this is already good. Flourish chat? Come on, letters. Okay. Hit enter. And if you want to double check to see if that was created, you can go to Git and there it is. I see Flourish, it just got created. That wasn't there before. Okay. Okay, so in this demo, we're creating a basic chat application using Node.js and Socket.io. The first goal is to set up a simple HTML web page that serves out the form and a list of messages. We're going to use the Node.js web framework Express to accomplish this. 
So first, let's create a package.json manifest file that describes our project. So all I have to do is uh, tell it how to open up my text editor and then create a new file. And there's a shortcut in this Node.js command prompt. If I type in code, which is actually short for Visual Studio Code, once you have that installed, and then the name package.json, I spell it right? It'll automatically open up Visual Studio Code with a new file called package.json in Git. Now I just need to make sure I save it to the right folder because I, uh, I think I forgot to actually change directories into the Flourish. So this also works the same if you type like Notepad and then a new title. It'll open up Notepad and do that too. So it's a very cool shortcut. So I'm going to go up to Git and then click in Flourish. <laughs> and I'm going to save package.json here. And I'm going to change directory and type like dir to see where I am. And let's do cdkit, dirs, cd, flourish, dir. OK. So now I'm in flourish and a package.json is saved there. So we are good to go. So over here in package.json, this is where I would want to type my code. And I have some copy paste code for ease of, you know, brevity and you guys don't want to watch me type live, but uh, this one is short and so I'll just get you started with what it looks like. So since this is like kind of metadata describing it, you want to give it a name and it could be anything like socket chat example. Put your comma outside your quotes and then you want to give it a version and this is version like 001 description. My first Socket.io app and uh, the dependencies. dependencies. And I'm going to leave this a set of blank curly braces. And I'm going to leave those blank because I'll show you later how you can uh, easily populate those dependencies with things that you'll need with using the npm install. So I'm going to save this. So now let's go back here and let's type npm install dash dash save and let's do express and use this version of express because I know it works for demo purposes. So express at uh, 4.10.2 and hit enter and then it'll start trying to download the express module. And look, dependencies now says express version 4.10.2. Just automatically did that. Now I'm going to do the same thing for socket. So that would be npm install dash dash save socket.io and hit enter. And when that's done, it automatically pops that right there too which is pretty neat. So those are just a few of the things uh, that the Node chat room application needs to function properly. That's why they're called dependencies. Uh, now that those are installed, we can create an app.js file that will set up our application. So here, I can do that same code shortcut again, but this time I'm going to call it app.js. And that opens up a new instance of Visual Studio and it's called app.js. And I'm going to do a save as to make sure it's saved in the right place. And I'm going to save it to git flourish and save it as app.js. All right. And in Visual Studio Code, you might start to notice that um, in this working files area, if you open a folder, let's go open the flourish folder and select that. Then it will show you all the files that are saved in this folder and so you can explore them all right here. And these are all the node modules that were automatically installed. There's app.js and there's package.json and it has all my code in it right now. So I can actually close this one and just work in one, one visual code 
Okay, so for app.js, uh, I'll walk through and explain this code as I go, but I'm not going to live type it. <laughs> so pay no attention to the man behind the curtain here. And I have a blog post that has all this code so you can copy and paste it and follow along when you go home too. So let me zoom in so you guys can see. Is that looking good to everybody? Okay, all right. So in the first line, we're requiring a module called express that I've already told you about. Then we create a variable that's instantiated to express. So that's line one. In line two, express initializes app to be a function handler that you can supply to an HTTP server, which is in line three. You see that server there. Uh, in line four, I initialize a new instance of socket.io by passing in HTTP, which is the HTTP server object. Then I listen to the connection event on line nine for incoming sockets, and at the end I uh, log that to the console. And the incoming sockets are like incoming chat messages. Are, are people chatting in your chat room? So back up to line five, this is a pretty important one. This will trip you up later. Um, on line five, we make sure that the HTTP server port is on port 3000 or, double bar means or, use the process environment port for hosting it on Azure Online. So if you have 3000, you can run it locally on your machine, but you'll just be talking to yourself. So you need this uh, process environment port for when you put this up on Azure, which has free web hosting, and you can tell your friends, hey friends, go to chat.azurewebsites.net and join my chat room and talk to me. And then you can share it with the rest of the world. We uh, define a route handler here that gets called when we hit our website home, and we're also calling res.send file to pass it an HTML file and we are going to now create the index.html that this is talking about. Okay, so let's go back to our Node.js over here. Okay, hopefully you guys can still see it in the back. And we're going to just do a new um, index. Okay, code index.html, enter. And uh, I can actually Go here, make sure it's saved in the right place because the demo gods love to hit you with, you didn't save your file, so it's not gonna work. So save it there, and it shows up over here. And this is just gonna be some super basic, ugly, like 90s website HTML because I'm not gonna do bootstrap or anything yet. But it's just to give you the idea of a chat room. So copy pasta because live coding is not good. Okay. Check this out. In Visual Studio Code, how many other places do this? You have little preview boxes of what your colors are going to look like on your front end. As a front end developer, this is my favorite thing ever. Ah, you can see what RGB 132.24.255 actually looks like. That's awesome. Okay, um, do we have any like front-end web developers in the room? Two brave souls. Okay, well, you can tell that there are colors involved and there are links to things. Okay, so let me just point out all it takes to load the socket IO client. Uh, let's see, where is that? That right here, I think in line 25, this variable socket equals IO and some empty parentheses. That's uh, exposing an IO global and connecting. That's this little script right here. So I'm not specifying any URL when I call IO and empty parentheses. Zoom in. You want me to zoom in? Okay, thank you, sorry about that. So I'm not specifying a URL here because it defaults to trying to connect to the host that serves the page. And the main idea behind socket IO is to send and receive any events you want. Uh, the script section in index.html contains socket.emit. So when the user types in a message, then the server gets it as a chat message event. And so when the program captures a chat message event, it wants to include it in the page. That is what this socket emit is doing. So when somebody types something, you want it to show up. 
Now, if we navigate back to the node app and run app.js, let's see what happens. So to run something in node, you type node as like the activation magic word and app.js. Oh, wait, wait, I gotta save this. Save, always save. What did I, what did that do? What did that do? Ah, save, okay. Now let's run. Hmm. I don't know. Okay, save that. Maybe I didn't save these other things. It's always something I didn't save to the demo gods. I think that fixed it. Okay. There. See, right here, it says it's listening on port 3000. That means that if I open up a web browser and go to localhost 3000, I'll be able to see what that crappy 90s HTML looks like. So let's go do that. That's the, this is what it looks like with Bootstrap. See how polished and shiny these buttons are? And uh, it, it scales. See, this, this is what Bootstrap will look like. So let's go to like localhost 3000. Yeah, it's bad. It's getting cut off on the end. Not mobile friendly at all. That stuff comes later. That's, that's a front end guy's problem. What we want to know is, is this working? Yes, yes it is, but only locally. But we're halfway there. And to exit gracefully out of running a, a Node.js app, you hit Control C. That took me a while to figure out. I was like, how do I tell it to stop listening? And I had to like close everything and like rage quit it all before I figured out, oh, Control C, okay. So now how to get this with the rest of the world. We would like to initialize our folder as a Git repository. So we need to open a new instance. Now, if you, uh, if you include Git commands when you're installing Node.js, you might be able to do this in the same window. Um, if you didn't do that, then you need to like install Git bash or something like that. But let me see if I can just like See if I'm in the right folder, and then if I can do a git command, and let me see what it says. Okay, so I installed the git commands when I was installing Node.js. So it initialized an empty git repository in c git flourish dot git. And that's really all you have to do, and it, it's nice enough to tell me that it initialized something. If I use git bash, it just returns a new line, and you have to say git status to see if it actually worked. So now that we've got a repository started, let's add our local files that we just created to it. And to do that, the command for that is git add space dot. That's just one of the commands. There's a few ways to add things, but git add dot adds everything. So if I do that, it goes bonkers because it's adding all those node modules. See, uh, in, in node modules, all this stuff right here, it's adding all of that. Okay. So after we type git add dot, we want to commit those changes to the repository's history with a short description of the updates. So that looks like git space commit space dash m, short for message, and then type a short message like initial commit, and then hit enter. And it goes bonkers again because it's committing all those changes. And at this point, you can go to github.com and log in and create a new repository. So let's do that. I think uh, if I hit re refresh, this, this won't work anymore because I stopped listening on localhost 3000, see? So let's go to github.com and sign in. There we go. Sign into your GitHub account. Does everybody have a GitHub account in this room? Raise your hand if you have one. There you are. Of course. Okay, so you all know how to create a new repository, I hope. You just go up to the plus button. And what should we call it? Let's flourish, right? Can, we do, can I do an exclamation point? Maybe? That's gonna worry me. I'm just gonna leave that off for now. You can give it an optional description if you want. Flourish open source conference is the best ever one. Yay. 
So leave it public um, for, because it doesn't really matter. You, you want people to be able to see this repository and see all the cool stuff that you're doing, right? So let's see here. Um, make it public and you don't want to initialize it with a readme. Um, it just, it's kind of a headache to do that. Uh, you can use a git ignore to add node, and that will ignore all the modules that you're not using, because you guys saw like that giant list of modules. We're only using two. We're using Express and Socket.io. So you can do a git ignore on all the ones you're not using, um, or you don't have to, and you can just kind of do that anyway. It's really up to you. But I'm just going to... You know, I'm just going to click on create repository because I don't trust the demo gods if I mess that up. And you can go back and do that later. Okay. So this is what it looks like right now. And I'm going to copy the URL to my clipboard. And let's go back to our terminal. And we need to connect these guys up. Okay. So inside of the folder that I initialized as a Git repository just a second ago, I want to tell Git, like local Git, the location of this remote version on GitHub's servers. And you can have multiple remotes, so each one requires a name. And for the main one, this one's commonly called origin. So I'm going to type in, I'm going to type in Git remote add origin, and then this is where you need to paste in the title or the URL, so paste. Paste the URL that you just got from GitHub. Dot git and hit enter. And I think that my local repository now knows where my remote one named origin lives on GitHub servers. Can I do like a git status? All right. So now that my local repository knows where that is, we want to push, that is send everything we've done locally up to GitHub. And you guys know that GitHub has a branching system, so you can work on different parts of a project at different times. And by default, the first branch is named master. So when you push and later pull from a project, you can tell Git the branch name you want uh, and the name of the remote that it lives on. So in this case, we'll send our branch named master to our remote GitHub named origin. So let me try to do a git pull origin master and see what happens. There shouldn't be anything there. It should be blank. OK. So now let me try to uh, do a git add dot. I wish it would give me more feedback. And then I'll do another git commit, and then I'll do a push. So I'm going to go ahead and try this git commit dash m, like example message of pushing it online. We'll find out if this is going well or not. And so git push, git push origin master. That might have needed to just be the first thing I did. If you do a git ignore, it adds things to your repository. I tried not to add anything to my repository, so I might not have needed to do a pull. OK, so it's asking me for my username for GitHub, which means it's talking to GitHub, and that's good. Sarah Sexted is my username, and I give it my password. Does that say success in there somewhere? 100%? I like seeing 100%. <laughs> OK. So let me go back to github.com and hit refresh. Ta-da! Now everything is the same remotely and locally. So we are almost done. Yes, is there a question in the back? Thank you. Is it uh, conventional to check in all your dependencies uh, with a Node.js project? That's what I was mentioning earlier. Uh, you can do an ignore and uh, ignore like all those dependencies you're not using. Just uh, for the sake of keeping my GitHub clean, I decided not to. And I, I just said, like, I'll go ahead and do all the dependencies. But you can, if you do a git ignore and you do git ignore node, then you can ignore all the node dependencies. So I, I can show you that later. OK. All right, so we're almost done. Um, everything is the same locally and remotely. And so now we're actually ready to publish our chat room to Azure and share it with the rest of the world. 
So to do that, you just go to azure.com, and this is where you can host websites, uh, up to like 10 websites for free if you sign up here. And um, if you want to have an Azure account, you can talk to me and I can tell you how to get one more easily than the usual sign up way. If you're a student, you guys might know about DreamSpark. And if you're a startup business, you might know about BizSpark. And Microsoft has these programs where we can give you access for free for like $150 worth of credit for, per month. OK. So azure.com, I'm going to open up an in-private browser to show you what it looks like from a, a new user logging in. And I'll go to my Microsoft account, live.com my password. And so this is what the Azure portal looks like. This is what it will look like if you have um, like some websites you want to host here in Azure. And so this is where you want to set up the continuous deployment so that um, GitHub is always just like pushing your chat room out onto the internet. OK, so the plus button that says new, that's what you want to click on to make a new website. And click on web and mobile, and that will open up a new blade over here where you can click on web app. And this is where you enter a unique URL. It has to be unique across the whole internet, so you're competing with everybody else who's using Azure. So let me see if anyone else has Flourish. Oh, you guys are so lucky. It's free, that's amazing. OK, so there's, it's going to be flourish.azurewebsites.net. And this is the subscription I have. I have at MSDN. Um, if you're brand new, you can have like a free trial and use that as your Azure subscription. Uh, the resource group, the, that's like if you want to have a resource group name. You don't, you don't need to pay attention to this for something so simple. But uh, central US is where you want the server to be, because that's where we live right now. I'm going to pin it to my dashboard and click on Create. Oh, I do need a resource name. That's OK. All right, uh, change it from new to default. Like, uh, let's see here. All right, let's see what happens when I say default web central US. Please fix. Yeah. I, I know. Hello? OK. I've never seen that before. Let's try this again. Why you got to go and change the portal on me right now, Microsoft? Flourish. Visual Studio Resource Group default. Default. There we go. OK. They are constantly changing the portal. I cannot keep up in my notes with all the changes they make, uh, as hard as I try. So over here, it's running a fun little animation that says it's deploying our web app. And uh, this is where it's like deploying it to GitHub. Uh, actually, we need to, we need to hook it up to GitHub after it's done deploying, which just happened. So. In this uh, settings sidebar, scroll down until you see, where is it? You need to see continuous deployment. I think it's under publishing. They might have changed it again. So settings and publishing, it should be under publishing, which is right here. Deployment source? It used, I swear, it used to say continuous deployment right under publishing. Okay. It's, I don't want slots. I don't think I want credentials. OK, let me choose a source from deployment source. Configure. OK, they changed the wording. I'm sorry. <laughs> you click on deployment source, and it's the same thing. You choose a source, and the sources available to you are GitHub and OneDrive and Bitbucket. So this is where you click on GitHub, and you choose uh, your username and your organization and choose the, the project. So this is where I want to find Flourish. Choose the master branch, and don't configure performance tests, and click OK. OK. 
And this will result in continuous deployment where Azure will pull in the most recent updates from your project. Super useful, for like if you're working on a team and people are making changes and you just want to not have to bother like refreshing and pushing and pulling and adding and doing all that. You just, as soon as you commit a new change, it just automatically changes the website. So it's going to grind its gears and do its thing. OK. We authorized, uh, it might ask you to authorize yourself. It didn't do that for me because I've done this before. But if you see like authorize your username to GitHub, like for example, how did it know I was Sarah Sexton? I already did that. So you need to sign in through GitHub when you do it on your own computer. Uh, then you, you choose your repository. If you already made one, it's going to pop up right at the top of the list. And uh, now it's going to uh, linking, it's going to start linking the GitHub repository, deploying, fetching the changes, and then it'll go active. And when it's, oh, yeah, question. The continuous deployment, that means that anything on your on GitHub's repository will be linked to Azure. Okay, yes. So that also, do we also make a step to make our local GitHub repository linked to the GitHub repository or do something to do with So the question was, um, Yes, it is correct that the GitHub's repository servers are automatically pushed to Azure. That's what continuous integration means. When you are developing, yes, you need to push your local Git to GitHub so GitHub can push to Azure. Yes, you still need to push. And I see a green check mark, so I think that means it's done already. OK, so anybody remember the URL? Right here, flourish azurewebsites.net. If I, what happens if I click on this? Ha! Ah, it works. You guys can get on your phones or get on your computers and go to flourish.azurewebsites.net right now. Hey, flourish is flourish is great. I agree with you. Now, since we're being recorded, please, please, please be adults. Please be adults, everybody. This is live. We're doing it live. And I just clocked in, like I could have done that faster, there were some introductions going on, but if I tried really hard, I, I've done this in half an hour before. You can do this in 30 minutes. Uh, we're at 40 minutes right now because we've been kind of moseying at our pace. But this is how easy it is to build your first Node.js app, put it on GitHub, and then publish it to Azure. Um, and I can show you how to delete everything too if you want to like delete your Azure or delete your GitHub repository and delete your Visual Studio code. But it runs in a Microsoft environment and you can feel free to applaud. Thank you for your time. <laughs> And uh, let me just show you a website I have that has, um, has the bootstrap. So if you guys went to like thatchat.azurewebsites.net, this one looks a little different. That was supposed to be a little different. They're, they don't have the, um, like the alternating colors. This one has alternating colored bars, which I kind of like. It's a nice look. Uh, but <laughs> it's worth it to have a bigger send button that is actually responsive especially if you're going on mobile. Like, if, if you are looking at this on your phone, you probably need a microscope or a magnifying glass to see it. I might be able to show you, like, one, let me show you just the one line of code that, that fixes that. Okay, let's go over here, inspect element. And where is that thing? Is it in the head? Yeah, yeah. Okay, there's one line of code. It's called uh, meta name viewport content width device width initial scale. That is going to make the mobile look better. Can I copy this? Maybe. Did that work? Can I copy paste? Copy. Uh, let's go to index, and it's in the header tag. What happens if I do that? Oh, sweet. Save. And OK, since I saved it, then that, I think that means I need to go back into git and let's see, git status. I modified index.html, so I want to do a git add, I think, and then do a git commit, git commit dash m uh, mobile, enter one file changed, one insertion, and git 
push, origin, master. And I think that works. I really wish it would give me more feedback. Wait, it's, it's still going. It's still going. Use my username, password. Oh boy. If you can't see your password, it's really hard to type it. Authentication failed. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, now let's see what happens. All right, people on your phones, uh, refresh that for me. Where did it go? Okay, it was Flourish dot Azure Websites dot net, right? If you, yes, it's flourish.azurewebsites.net. So people on phones, if you refresh, does it look changed? Does it look bigger? It does? Success! That one line of code makes your whole website mobile friendly, er. Okay, I'm done. Thanks everybody, uh, questions, let's applause. And then Q&A. Yes, sir. As a non-front-end person, a basic question. So you showed that there's a snippet inside of the HTML where you assign a variable to IO slash slash. How, what tied that to the actual framework that you pulled in? How does it know where? Is there anything further up there where you're saying uh, IO is the constructor for uh, the um, I think that might be, OK. That, uh, let me close this. Oh boy. People are going to keep okay, chatting so over here. It's somehow inherited because of what's serving up the HTML in the first place is setting up the, this Because that's JavaScript that's running on the host, right? It's running on the browser. I, I think so. so. Uh, it's kind of hard to hear you from back here, but like, um, this is a, a script. Like, it doesn't have a, a separate script area, it's, it's in line. And, oh, why don't. I can totally show you all the code behind if you come up and chat with me after this is over. I'd be more than happy to show you everything. Another question? Yeah. Uh, I know you're talking about Azure um, doing like three web hosting. Yeah. Uh, but you choose your own name with the Azure like, end tag. Oh, yeah. So you want me to delete flourish.azurewebsites.net, don't you? <laughs> no, no, no. I was wondering if I already have my own web like, domain name. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. Um, I've been to uh, hackathons at, at universities, and, and students have been trying to figure out like the domain name service. Like, OK, I've got bob.com. How do I load that on Azure? And I wasn't there for when they figured out the solution to how to do that. But I'm pretty sure they did figure it out. So I know it's possible. It's, it's definitely possible. I can't tell you how right now. But it's on my to-do list. Any other questions? I'll, I'll uh, hang out up here on the stage, and at 4 o'clock, we have snacks. Question in the back. I know a while back, there was a fork of a Node.js. I think it was called IO.js. And then they were trying to make it like one over the other. IO.js? I think that was I can't have an opinion on it if I don't know about it, and which I don't. So. Uh, I'm sorry, but um, Node.js has, is, has been good to me, but it's definitely not exclusive. And I went to, I think, I think I just, I went to like socket.io, I think that's a website. And that's where I learned how to make this chat room. If you go to socket.io and click on get started, uh, you can click on write a chat application. And it shows you how to do exactly all this. And it was just so easy that I, I loved the process. So this is one of the only things that I've explored in this area. Question. So you kind of have the uh, calling of the index.html and your routing in that JS file. Uh, if you wanted to incorporate the backend databases of this, would that also go to the JS file, or is it going to follow the like, MVC sorts of thing? Hmm. That is a good question. And I'm still researching on that subject, so I will have to get back to you on that, but I'd be happy to look into it. And I've got business cards with me. OK. Yeah, come up and talk to me after that. Uh, I want to remember to look into that. Any other questions? OK, guys, thank you so much for your time. Thanks.